Hi guys and welcome back to this channel. My name is Tendai and thank you so much for tuning in today and for sending in agreement with me into this morning's prayer walk and devotions. It is my prayer that you find this video, this message encouraging. May it bless you as you carry on, as you soldier on in your with your own personal time and devotions with God. Now guys, I want to encourage you like I also had to learn not to shy away from allowing the Holy Spirit to lead us and to guide us and to, to bring that divine revelation and insight and clarity of the Word of God because it is God's plan for us to understand what He's saying. It is God's plan to receive His divine truth and you know His revealed truth, if I may put it like that. And it is God's plan for us to have you know a helper, an advocate that stands for us, that is with us in present time, right? To help us and to illuminate each and every battle to illuminate each and every each and every hindering spirit that is fighting against us and stopping us from walking into the knowledge of Christ right the Holy Spirit is here to help us walk in God's righteous path and yes this this faith is not is not easy sometimes and yes life can get heavy sometimes but God says the Holy Spirit is here to minister to us is here to speak to us and is here to encourage us and strengthen us right this is why the word of God says guys amen now the Holy Spirit is also here as we soldier on with our Bible study and, and in our devotions the Holy Spirit is also here to you know to help us understand the context of the various chapters and scriptures that that we're going to that, that we're going to look in today and even any other time right god wants us to understand the word god wants to understand the bible right because these are the words of god this is like the divine inspirations of god right so when you ask the holy spirit you know to give us that revelation we are going to understand the context of the stories that are written in the bible and how they relate to us in present time right now what an amazing thing to know that god loves us so much that he wants us to learn that he wants us to to grow to grow in truth to grow in a in an amazing relationship with him and to just know him and to know and to acknowledge him as our god and as our lord and savior all right now, having said that, guys, and jumping on in into today's message, I'm going to share one of my favorite scriptures. And um, the scripture is found in Jeremiah 29, verse 11 to 14. And the scripture reads, For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster, to give you a future and a hope. In those days when you pray, I will listen. If you look for me wholeheartedly, you'll find me. I'll be found by you, says the Lord. I'll end your captivity and restore your fortunes. I'll gather you out of the nations where I sent you and will bring you home again to your own land. All right. Now, I also like reading this same scripture from the King James Version. And the scripture reads, For I know the thoughts I think towards you, towards you says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. Then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I'll hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me, when you shall search for me with all your heart. I'll be found by you, saith the Lord. I'll turn away your captivity, and I'll gather you from all the nations, and from all the places whither I have driven you, saith the Lord. And I'll bring you again into the place since I caused you to be carried away captive. Amen. This is where the scripture ends. All right, guys. Now, just to give you context of what's happening in this chapter, we see God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah and is speaking and prophesying to the Jewish nation, right? Now, what is happening here is, you know, the Jewish nation... They are facing, up until this point, they are facing hardships, they are in turmoil because they are now under the, the oppression of the Babylonian kingdom, right? Now, why are they under the oppression and why are they enslaved by the, by the Babylonian kingdom? That's a good question. Now, if we can go back in previous chapters, we see God had already spoken and warned them and foretold them even way before they had set foot in the captive. I mean, even before they had set foot in the promised land, right? In Canaan, 
God had already told them that, oh, like my children, when you are, I am preparing you to go into this land. And when you get into the land, I don't want you to conform to the cultures of the surrounding nations because these nations have defiled the land. They've defined my word and they are now living out of their own selfish ambitions and will and their own selfish desires right now even when they finally got into the promised land we see god still reiterating the same instructions through and through but we see that the children of of jew uh, of uh, of of you know of the jewish nation they did not obey god they continued to to double into witchcraft witchcraft into lust into a lot of sin they continue to to chase other gods they do, they continue to to worship mystical idols and other gods and god really you know grew in anger and so when up until this point now we see now the captivity they are in in the babylon in the babylonian kingdom it is now a form of punishment right God is punishing them because of their disobedience. And now we see them that they are crying, right? They are in turmoil. They are experiencing hardships. They do not understand the will of God. They don't understand God's prophecies. And, you know, because now in the midst of all this, we see that they are now listening to, to different voices, right? They are now listening to different prophets that that are not even speaking on what God is saying over their lives, right? We see now they are, they are rejoicing and accepting this false prophet. As we can see in chapter 28, Jeremiah chapter 28, they are accepting this false prophet and they are taking his word on, right? And this really also angered God, right? Because you see that, as, as I already mentioned, as it says in the scriptures, that they had rejected so many other prophecies. They had rejected so many other prophets prior to Jeremiah here. All right. Now, we see later on that this false prophet, Prophet Ananiah, later died. And then we see God reiterating once again to the Jewish nation not to listen to false prophets, but rather he is going to end their captivity after 70 years, right? And then he will take them back to the land, the, to the promised land, and then he is going to fulfill the promise that he had already spoken over, over their lives, right? Now, in the same way, what what can we learn from this from the scripture? What can we learn from this chapter as modern day Christians? What can we learn? Now what I've been learning is what I think the primal factor of this chapter is letting us know that when we disobey God, there will be consequences, right? We might hate it, we might think God is condemning us, we might think that God hates us, but the truth is we need to be accountable and we need to realize where we fall short. We need to realize and to acknowledge all the areas where we come uh, when we walk ahead of God. We need to uh, acknowledge and to become aware of all the things that we do that are stopping us from walking into the path and from walking us into the relationship that God wants us to have with him, right? Now, I know just as God say to the Jewish nation in chapter four to seven, right? We are, he's saying, you know, get comfortable, um, prosper the land, expand your families, take your time, because I am still going to deliver you and I still have plans for you. In the same way, God is saying to us today, guys, that in the midst of our hardships, in the midst of today's turmoils, you know, God is saying, I still have a plan for you and it's a plan for you to have future and hope and an expected end right god loves us so much that he's got endless grace and endless mercies through christ jesus and then we are made righteous by the precious blood of jesus you know and that is god's plan right for us to live in a life that is that that is abundant to uh, for us to live in a life that is fulfilling and that and that is a true testament to the kingdom of god right but it is also important that whilst we are waiting and whilst we are learning and then learning, God is saying we need to stay focused on, on him, right? We need to stay focused on, on Jesus, right? We, need, we must stay focused 
and trust and believe that God still has a plan for us in the midst of our hardships because sometimes the deliverance cannot cannot is not and it won't be immediate sometimes it will take a long time but we still have to trust and believe that yes through all this learning and unlearning season God is not punishing us God is now helping us and he's now teaching us and is now developing other skills and developing other characters our character right so that we will improve so that we will strengthen our relationship that we have with them and we'll be able to move on with all power and authority through the name of Jesus Christ right now the other thing that i have learned from the scripture is that in the waiting god is telling us that we should be careful of the voices that we listen to right we see the voice we see the voices that the the israelites were listening to they were listening to false prophets right and we see that most of these false prophets they were leading them into a path of destruction right they were leading them to a path of darkness right and this even angered god more right now we know even in today that god is always encouraging us is always warning us to be careful of the voices that we're listening to because every voice is not the voice of God every voice is not leading to to a path of righteousness right and just as we see today there are many prophets there are many there are just so many drama just so many things that are happening in the churches and God is saying be careful to the voice that you're listening to seek me seek my face seek the holy spirit to guide you to give you that divine revelation and wisdom yes we know we need community and god is saying we should trust the community that is given us right because god, god is already ordained specific people to equip us to to strengthen us and to and to really help us to understand and to 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 help us to understand and to also confirm god's plan and purpose over our lives but we have to seek him first and then the prophecy and then the confirmation will come will be secondary right because you already know what god has spoken to us on an individual basis right so god is telling us just to wrap up that we should be careful of the voices that we listen to and also thirdly god is is encouraging us to trust his timing and to trust his will right we see that the children of israelites they got desperate to the fact that they were now looking into into witchcraft into soothsayers and all of this you know dark dark activities that really came against the knowledge of god right because only because they did not trust god's God's timing and God's will. So God is reminding us today, guys, that you need to that we must trust his will and we must trust his timing. And this is something that I've been struggling with as well, right? Trusting God's timing and his will. But as he spoke this all over me over the past few weeks and he's still speaking and reassuring me, you know, to trust his will and to trust his timing because we know everything that falls out of God's time and falls out of God's will will always fall apart. And we can see this that in the book of Jeremiah, right at the end, we see that, you know, the Israelites, the Jewish nations, they did not listen to Jeremiah, right? They did not listen to his prophecies. They rejected him. And as a result, right at the end of the book of Jeremiah, we see that God allowed Nebuchadnezzar to take over and to destroy the temple, right? And and it had to be restored some other times. And the Jewish nation at that time, they did not see the promises that God had ordained for them at that specific time, all right? Now, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to walk in the path of destruction. Yes, there are hardships. Yes, life can be difficult, as already mentioned, but I want to walk in the path that God has ordained and that leads to the promises of God. Amen. Now, this is what God has been encouraging me. And this is what God has really been teaching me through this scripture for the past.
Now, guys, as I wrap up this morning, I want to encourage you that God still has a plan for you as well. I know I've been encouraged and the Holy Spirit has really helped me to really understand and to really remind what God is, what God is saying over my life. Yes, I have doubt. Yes, I have fears. But we have to know that we fight the devil. We fight an enemy who is coming against us, who doesn't want us to walk into the life that God has ordained over us, right? So this morning, guys, what an amazing feeling it is to know that we have a friend in God, right? That we have a friend, we have a love, we have we have a savior who came on earth to die for our sin, right? So that we can have direct access to God, so that we can be reconciled with God. And that each and every day, it is not by our strength, but it is truly by the grace, by the mercy, by the faithfulness, and by the love and unwavering love and support of God, right? Who wants us to live a life that he has planned for us, right? So having said that, guys, I want to remind you that God is faithful, God is able through the hardships of life, through the amazing opportunities and experiences in life, through the hurts, through the traumas, God is still here with us, He loves us, and His plan is still for good, right? He still wants us to to have that expected end, right? But it starts by acknowledging. It starts by us acknowledging and for us repenting and confessing where we where we went wrong. And God doesn't condemn us, guys. He doesn't condemn us. He's a loving father. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is not afraid of what we have done. He is not intimidated by our experiences, but he wants to build us. He wants to us to have a relationship with them regardless of who we are, right? Regardless of what we have done in the past. And what an amazing life and opportunity we we have knowing that through Christ Jesus and acknowledging him as our risen Lord and Savior that we have already won eternal life and I thank God for the gift of that he gave us at the birth of Jesus I thank God for his faithful promises for the plan that he had for us to have relationship with Jesus right now guys I just want to encourage you this morning to carry on with your prayer walk or where or whatever it is that you do, God is still here. He still listens. May you be encouraged, and I will see you next week. Till then, happy fearless faith Fridays, guys. Take care. God bless and bye.